call you folks. This is Andre Elkin of MariaDB Engineering presenting to you a tale of Undaunted XA together with my fellow colleague Suyata Sivakumar. We would like to share uh, some understanding of how XA transactions are replicated, uh, some uh, features that have been observed uh, in this process over years now. Uh, still our key announcement in this presentation is uh, reaching the level of uh, support for XA as uh, them being fully crash recoverable. Uh, this is a novelty and we're proud to announce that uh, it's not the end of the story. Uh, we would also show uh, some nice implications of uh, this progress. So let's start off uh, XA uh, short for extended architecture. Uh, it is uh, formally defined uh, as a framework for constructing distributed transactions in this uh, document I'm highlighting. Uh, from the MariaDB server point of view, uh, XA transaction is basically the same as regular transaction. Uh, just user has a uh, few more controls over it. Uh, let's look at the picture. On this slide, <clears throat> I present the master uh, in this uh, uh, bold black box, black framed box. Uh, you see uh, user actor fits in to master statements of mix it with XA uh, keywords and uh, regular operations inside of transactions like this update table. So say at this point XA prepare arrives to the server and when it okays uh, then this transaction uh, must stay with the resource with the MariaDB server basically forever until it gets committed. Uh, but uh, those 16 years back when XA framework was made into 5.0 of MySQL, uh, at once uh, a bug was reported. It's 12.161 uh, claiming that uh, this promise of uh, recoverability of prepared XA uh, it doesn't work. It didn't work. Uh, it didn't work in case uh, server was configured with bin log. So in that case, prepared transaction disappeared. Uh, it was fixed uh, after 10 years. So it took almost 10 years to get to fix it uh, because of various uh, technical complications. And XA, after all, uh, in processing uh, in the server transits from various models, uh, server core, engine, replication, recovery. So all of those must be encompassed. Uh, and the solution was made uh, in form of this highlighted 12161 uh, fixes. Uh, they were uh, imported by us in form of this MDEF 742. And of course, we improved uh, Oracle's fixes in a number of ways, uh, having this advantage uh, of working over a patch that they donated, maybe unwillingly. Uh, however, we could not fix that time uh, another uh, deficiency of the now of the bug 12.1.6.1, which is this bug 7.6.2.3.3, uh, claiming that XA is still crash unsafe, but it is crash unsafe already in a tiny windows. Uh, I will show you here. <clears throat> so when XA prepare or XA commit arrives at server and at 
very small actually time window if server crashes uh, then yeah it could be different outcomes uh, uh, disagreement between the engine and the bin lock about status of that seed so uh, uh, this mdef for 21469 crash safe login of xa that we are presenting uh, covers uh, this uh, tiny time windows how it's done uh, let's look into those red boxes uh, with uh, some sort of looking glass on this picture uh, xa preparer basically executes uh, uh, similarly to uh, commit uh, of regular transaction orange um, text represents regular transactions as commit so logic is uh, basically the same uh, let us focus on commit first so commit first prepares transaction in engine so engine is a actor inside of the uh, master server and uh, when it's okay uh, we've been logged so all the records that correspond to modifications uh, are in one or another format uh, we have two yeah as you know uh, are stored in bin log uh, when this is okay uh, transaction proceeds to commit and you see that uh, asynchronously with commit actually uh, may go to replicate in a, a regular synchronous replication in semi-synchronous it's not like that so here is asynchronous full asynchronous picture difference with xa preparer is that it doesn't do commit this orange uh, line message from transaction handler to in a db does not exist for xa preparer uh, so um, uh, we have uh, this situation uh, and uh, if crash happens inside of the red uh, oval here uh, say after prepare but before uh, writing to bin log uh, in the regular case in the orange case uh, such transaction would be not found in bin lock at recovery and be rolled back uh, just uh, by the virtue of the recovery algorithm uh, but what about user xa prepare it will be found at recovery uh, af, uh, at recovery in in a db as it is depicted here uh, but it is not found in bin log however it would be wrong to roll it back uh, without doing something extra uh, because uh, additionally to the uh, uh, presence of xit in bin log uh, uh, sorry to lack of uh, xit in bin log uh, uh, inside of the recovery uh, sequence of bin log files uh, if, if XSEED doesn't exist there, uh, it's not enough to decide to roll the user XA uh, because we need to dis distinguish this uh, unexisting XSEED from the XSEEDs that may have been prepared a long time ago. Uh, and uh, to make it more clear, on the, this uh, picture you see uh, crash after prepare so uh, when server restarts xa commit uh, and xa commit is not sent for for example so say there is no this operation uh, then uh, this seed uh, would remain in the server for through all the um, restarts that the server will uh, entertain uh, so 
it would transit from one server session to another. And therefore, in order to decide uh, to roll it back, because of this crash, uh, we need to prove that this seed is fresh uh, from the last uh, server session. And uh, this sort of method requires uh, some complicated logic of maintaining uh, of this notion of uh, freshness of seed. Uh, uh, and uh, it was offered uh, in analysis of this Oracle bug 76023. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, this method uh, looked to be pretty complicated and uh, we didn't go this way uh, instead instead uh, our method uh, was uh, based on the following observation uh, if xa preparer comes in and say we would first write to bin log the content of the transaction and then we go to prepare it in a DB. How about it? Uh, let's consider uh, if we crash in the middle of the two. Uh, then, then uh, apparently at uh, restart, we have what? Seed existing in binlock, and at the same time, it is not in, in a DB. However, uh, we have something here. We have something here, namely content of the transaction in bin log is present, right? So you may guess it uh, ahead of me. Yes. How about replay it? So actually roll it forward. It's a, one of the basic principles of recovery, by the way. So uh, that's how we manage uh, to recover. And let's look at how it indeed work. For that, I show you uh, my server. Here it is. Uh, we have XA prepare function uh, with a simulation of crash at some point. Here is a point of crash. I will use it. Um, so we have a client. Let me show the client. I set up already two tables, uh, engine rocks DB, in a DB, uh, they are empty at this time, you see. So nothing in bin lock at this time. And uh, let me uh, create first transaction. It's here. So XA, XA will be started inserting in uh, rocks DB table, in a DB table and prepares it. Xeed, uh, just the name, uh, literal Xeed. Yeah. Then I can uh, check if it's uh, here. Yeah, it is recovered, recoverable. Uh, we see it's in prepared state. Uh, we can show it in bin log, can we? Uh, yes, we see it is uh, with GTID. 0, 1, 1, and uh, its state of uh, the last uh, event prints out uh, is XA prepare. So it is in bin lock. It can be sent to slave and uh, be became prepared on slave. So uh, that's how uh, it works. We can now roll it back. I want to roll it back. Roll it back. See. And we then see what in bin lock. Yeah, we have second GTID with 0, 1, 2 as identifier GTID. And uh, uh, XA rollback is what we expect. That's good. So uh, tables, therefore, must be empty. We can also check that. This selects, yeah. I will use it uh, just in, from history, empty set, empty set. Good. 
then uh, there is nothing to recover. I just showed you that uh, how basically uh, MDF724, uh, sorry, for two works, it works good. Uh, then uh, let us crash our server. I do that through debug simulation here. Um, I prepare a server to crash when? Crash before a last engine prepare. So we have two. So that means we write uh, into bin log first, then we would prepare in one of the two engines, and then we crash here after the first one is prepared. It's sort of complicated. Uh, a scenario, uh, not necessarily very practical, but I just show that multi-engine situation uh, is covered and uh, works pretty much robust. So let me take my transaction again. Here it is, and uh, I go to prepare it. Yeah, lost connection to the server during uh, uh, query. Where it happens, uh, let us uh, see. Uh, it must be over there. Yeah, so this simulation, uh, you see, when uh, HA info next is empty, so a loop uh, of all the hundredtons involved in transaction uh, is. Uh, over so the last loop on the last loop before executing prepare on the last loop that is uh, in inner db it is the second insert is to inner db so uh, right here we crash we crash and now now let us try to recover what we will have so i executed and uh, we shall see XA recover, right? What it spe speaks. Yes, it says uh, I am here. And uh, let us commit it now. Yeah, I committed it. And uh, now select TR will show us one and in a DB one. So uh, we recover it, we recover it, and that's what I uh, wanted to prove uh, that it works. Uh, of course, uh, these examples are quite uh, naive. Uh, of, it should be uh, rather serious, uh, maybe stress tests sh be shown, but uh, we do that, of course, in the patch that is being reviewed at this point. Uh, we do a lot of stuff that shakes uh, servers seriously. We do that. Uh, what we have uh, gained out of this architectural method, more generally than having uh, XA recoverable, uh, we have the following things. Uh, there was some work done for benchmarking of uh, sync bin lock and inner DB flash lock at transaction commit combinations. You know, these two parameters are responsible for uh, crash safety on server. Uh, well, uh, this, uh, of course, means that uh, it implies that I'm talking about just one engine involved. Uh, so we have uh, the following results out of benchmarking. I will show you. And the results uh, were very much encouraging. Uh, two lines here worth of attention. Uh, in red, we see a uh, combination of inner DB flash at commit equal to one. This is default, and sync bin lock is zero. It is also default, and it is zero. Uh, on this uh, graph, you see uh, latency actually uh, above above the magenta, and the throughput is also uh, smaller than in magenta. So 62 here is a number of threads. So you see that uh, magenta. But what is magenta stands for? It stands for exactly a recovery 
parameters uh, that we uh, would like to have with this method of XA recovery. Uh, roll forward recovery. Sync bin log to one and in a DB uh, flash log at commit zero actually outperforms uh, the current default. But at the same time, this combination is actually crash safe. We can afford uh, flash lock at commit uh, to zero because we can replay transaction that in a DB, say even prepare it, but uh, at recovery it lost it. It may lost it if it's if it is uh, zero, right? So, but because we can uh, replay, uh, we will restore it, uh, and then uh, you see that if you have right now. Uh, your workload uh, as a client consisting of entirely of XA transactions, then you can afford this uh, setup and gain more performance. That's uh, very much viable. Uh, so, what else we can say? Uh, yeah, this uh, roll forward method. Of it's of course not necessarily limited to the XA. Yeah, and we currently trying to extend it, uh, expand it over regular transactions uh, in this uh, 1800959. Uh, this uh, task is under architecture review at this point. We're hoping that uh, we will make it through. Let us see, fingers crossed. Uh, yeah. Basically, I covered uh, what I wanted to bring today, and uh, uh, I only remains to say big thanks to guys who were helpful enormously to make it uh, this uh, XA, uh, basic XA 742, and uh, uh, as well as this recovery uh, of our. Uh, uh, works done. So Sergei Vaitovich, former colleague, uh, thanks to him, Marko Mekela, Sergei Galupchik, Alex Schwenke, my fellow colleagues, and as well as Sven Sand Sandberg of uh, Upstream Oracle, uh, thanks to him for great analysis with me uh, on that uh, method that we didn't do, but it helped us to make it better. Thank you for listening to this presentation. Bye. So, hello. I would like to start by thanking um, Andre for his great talk and also the MariaDB Foundation for uh, having me here uh, for this brief in interview um, to Andre uh, about his talk. So, hi, Andre. Um, the first thing I would like to ask is about recovery in uh, um, XA transactions after a crash. Uh, you mentioned that it can be done via the binary log. And I would like to ask you if uh, it requires the log format to be raw or if statement is also OK. And I would like to ask if um, bin log row image uh, should be set to full, or other values are also acceptable. Uh, so to the uh, format, uh, requirement is for the uh, single engine, engine XA, so a sort of uh, normal case, regular case, uh, any format works. So as long as a uh, server configured with mixed bin log format, which is not really format, but policy to convert to uh, a raw format at times. Uh, so if it's uh, this way, then uh, server will select the correct format, should it be statement and should it be raw. Uh, and uh, recovery must work with the single engine. With the multiple engines, uh, situation is tricky, uh, and uh, uh, raw format is uh, generally necessary. Uh, well, generally, but again, uh, now we also should consider a relaxed uh, high availability configuration of the engine. If stay in a DB uh, flash uh, lock at commit is zero, then raw 
the format must be wrong in this situation. Okay, interesting. Um, another and great... The, it, sorry. Yeah, and it, uh, sorry, I, I haven't finished the um, full or not full image of the row. Yeah, uh, we don't uh, really require a full image, so it could be up um, to the user. Okay, another great thing you mentioned is that uh, there is a task uh, in review for uh, extending this mechanism to non-XA transactions, regular transactions. Um, I would like to ask you uh, if you can give us a bit more information or um, maybe, uh, I don't know, when do you plan the tasks to be implemented if it will be implemented? Yeah, that, that's a, sort of um, the task has some history, and thanks to Marco Mercola, who actually one of the pushers of uh, to make it uh, through. Uh, but uh, at this point of time, I think architecturally it's getting uh, very attractive. So I hope we will uh, uh, finish off all these necessary details uh, in architectural analysis. So far, it's good. And uh, then on the good, uh, uh, very good that we have uh, this patch for uh, XA uh, recovery, which is uh, largely will be reused. Uh, so uh, there is a good chance that we, if architecturally everything is fine, we can make it into code uh, within, well, I cannot say time, <laughs> I just fear to say that, but months, uh, two months, in two months, three months, up, up to, uh, hopefully like that. Wow. So if it will be five, uh, 10.6, uh, I wish uh, it would, but uh, let us see, yeah. Okay, uh, that's very interesting. I really hope it will be done uh, for that version. Um, another question, uh, can we use XA transactions with SPIDER? Yeah, that, that, that's a very good mentioning of the one of the major users of XA. Uh, and uh, as it is our engine, uh, of course, it must be first to uh, leverage uh, this relaxed high availability configurations on the engine and then gain performance hopefully so that's to be seen and i really hope that uh, the uh, spider will uh, show uh, very good uh, of itself <laughs> Okay, good. Um, as a final question, I would like to ask you uh, what's in your to-do related to the XA transactions. So if there is some task or bug fix that is worth mentioning here. Uh, well, we uh, having some uh, corner cases, uh, bugs that uh, needs to be fixed. Uh, I feel personal duty to complete that, uh, to have everything like packaged uh, in the server, what comes to XA and it, XA replication mostly. I, I'm not uh, the original writer of XA, of course, but uh, I had to develop into a lot of um, details uh, of its implementation. Uh, for the replication part, uh, beyond this um, uh, bin log sort of based recovery, we're also having slave side. So when XA is on the slave, and then uh, it's also an interesting situation how to recover there when slave doesn't have bin log. Uh, and uh, as many knows, or who doesn't uh, uh, slave has this sort of recovery through uh, uh, GT uh, uh, position table, GT slave position in MySQL uh, database uh, we have. So, and then uh, in order to recover XA on slave, we need to do some uh, tricky things. They are uh, explained, the uh, design is presented uh, on, uh, associated with uh, this 21469 MDEF 
uh, the tasks that I presented today. Uh, so there is a associated task uh, for the slave, and it, it should be uh, followed soon, but uh, we need uh, time and, again, uh, also architecture review. Okay, interesting. Um, yeah, this was the final question from me. So let me just say again, thanks to Andre and to the MariaDP Foundation. Uh, thanks. Thanks a lot, guys.